G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video we're going to talk about amine antioxidants, so a really common class of antioxidant technology. So let's begin first with what we're trying to achieve. So remember, oxidation in a very very simple manner is the cooking of the base oil and the additive package. So that was the very simple explanation that we gave in a previous video. If you remember, there was a what we called an auto-oxidation cycle, which described all the steps where organic compounds can break down um, due to a number of factors. Right? Now, we can interrupt this cycle in a number of ways. So as an example, this RH group, remember R stands for kind of any kind of polymer, um, we can prevent that from converting into a free radical by eliminating sources of UV light by eliminating metals. So that's where uh, metal deactivators come in. Um, we can also eliminate exposure to oxygen um, and we can reduce the uh, temperature of the system as well. So that's gonna reduce the, the number of radicals that are in the system. So that really cuts off that first pathway the second pathway is the peroxy radical, so decomposition products. We can intercept those, and if we can neutralize those, um, that is another loop in the auto-oxidation cycle that we can prevent. Then we've got peroxide decomposers. So in a previous video, we talked about the way that ZDDP is able to uh, decompose these peroxide products. Right? So that's another example of how we can interrupt the cycle. And finally, we've got the alkoxy and hydroxy radicals, which can also be intercepted. Now, in this particular video, we are going to be talking about how what we call primary antioxidants intercept the peroxy radicals, as well as the alkoxy and uh, hydroxy radicals. All right, so the, the primary function of these antioxidants is to neutralize these through a couple of very basic equations but we'll go into the actual mechanics of how the molecule does it. So, we come to our main molecule, one of the more common ones that is used in uh, oxidation, uh, sorry, antioxidant additive packages, is a product called uh, diphenylamine. Uh, often it's called ADPA for short, right? So let's look at this one because it's a very common one. Uh, this is what the molecule looks like. So you'll often uh, hear them called aromatic amines. Well, this picture should make that obvious. We've got two aromatic rings. Remember, R is kind of a polymer that goes off, you know, there could be 10, 12, four carbons attached to this, who knows? But we're concentrating on the functional group, which is this nitrogen in between uh, two um, aromatic groups. Okay, so let's look at the, uh, the way that this functional group acts. So let's say I've got a peroxy radical, right, which is going to interact with this ADPA molecule. So ADPA is going to donate a hydrogen atom to it and in itself become an, what is called an aminal radical. Okay, so I'm going to put a little counter in the bottom left and that shows that we have now neutralized one radical molecule so far. Now the aminal radical can actually interact with another peroxy radical and that is going to cause it to decompose into a, um, a alkoxy radical. And then we've got another peroxy radical, which is going to attach to the molecule. All right, so we've added another one that we've decomposed. So now we've decomposed two radicals. Now we encounter another peroxy radical. It's going to attach itself. So we have neutralize another one that makes three and eventually this is going to decompose but in the decomposition process it's going to throw off a radical an alkoxy radical so we're going to subtract one away and say the net was two what was interesting about that is if you were to replay those mechanics um, we actually neutralized four peroxy radicals but we produced two alkoxy radicals so the net effect is we neutralize two. Now in actual practical uh, effect, they've actually done some experimentation uh, around this. And what they believe is that uh, each molecule of, 
uh, diphenylamine is actually able to neutralize four different radicals. So evidently we're, we're probably missing a couple of steps in this process. Maybe the mechanics are not completely understood, um, but that is the net effect. Now, something to know about this, that was the low temperature situation. When we get to high temperatures, uh, that is above about 120 degrees Celsius, the mechanism for ADPA neutralizing uh, radicals is actually quite a bit different. Some might say radically different. So let's start with the ADPA molecule again. Okay, the initial steps are exactly the same. So we encounter a peroxy radical, it gets neutralized. We form an amino radical. Okay, I've neutralized one radical. Uh, then another peroxy radical comes along and I create what's called a nitoxyl radical. All right, this is where we start to get into some differences. So let's say I have another um, uh, hydrocarbon molecule. Uh, in, in previous uh, auto oxidation cycles, we represented this as just RH. Uh, but what if instead of saying that just the, the H comes off and we have an R, what if we actually show kind of the rest of the molecule? Specifically, we've got um, a unpaired valence electron on one of the carbons and there is an adjoining carbon that has a hydrogen attached to it. What's going to happen in that circumstance is that uh, this radical can be neutralized. Okay, so I've added another one. That goes away. And if I have another peroxy radical come in to interact, it's actually also going to be neutralized. Now one thing that you'll notice is that firstly, we have now neutralized three radicals, but also if you recognize this picture, that was the nitoxyl radical that we had about three steps ago. So we have kind of been able to neutralize two radicals for free, right? And we ended up back with the same uh, byproduct of uh, ADPA. Now that kind of cycle can really go on as many times as it wants and you can keep neutralizing more radicals. Now in practice this doesn't happen because the cycle gets interrupted. Um, so let's, let's continue looking at um, another way that it could interact with another molecule. All right, so we've got the nitoxyl radical and it has neutralized some number. Then we have another hydrocarbon come along, which is a hydrocarbon radical. It's going to react. And what we get back is ADPA. So there is actually another cycle whereby more hydrocarbon radicals can form our original antioxidant amine. Now in practice, this can't go on forever, right? Um, so experimentally, what they have discovered is that uh, for each uh, ADPA uh, amine molecule, we're able to neutralize approximately 12 radicals in the system, but that's a really good return on the investment, right? So it's approximately 12, but it's a bit of give or take. Um, uh, eventually, th these will break down, right? And ADP ADPA will become less effective over time. So for all those people who are listening who are turbine operators, for example, and are watching the, the amine numbers on the ruler test, this is effectively what's happening. The ADPA is slowly becoming less effective. Now, in a future video, we'll explore um, hindered phenols and how um, phenolic antioxidants work, but also the way that phenols actually boost amine antioxidants. So they actually work together in what we call an um, antioxidant synergy. Right? So one boosts the other, and that's why the phenols always drop off before the amines. All right, I hope that's been helpful. I know it was um, a little bit dry today, but uh, as usual, if you've got questions or comments, leave them down below. This has been Lubrication Explained.